Can you guys see that? Great. OK. Um, so today, I'm going to be talking about uh, an open source port of the popular game called Minecraft. OK? Um, and as a tangent, I'm Ryan Klausner, uh, 2013 Code for America fellow. Since the majority of this crowd is composed of CFA fellows, um, I won't bore you with too many details, but basically what CFA is is uh, a nonprofit based in San Francisco helps cities solve hard problems. Um, and yeah, that, I, think that, I think that's a long and short of it. That should be good enough. Um, how many people are actually familiar with Minecraft, the, the game? Most people, OK. Um, so for the sake of inclusivity, oh, actually, I, I need to give you guys a tour of um, this format, because it's going to be a little bit weird. It's going to get weird in here really quickly, um, mostly because I have a fear of slideshows and um, like presentation software in general, like Keynote and PowerPoint. So for this specific uh, presentation, I decided to roll my own. Um, I'll be branding it and selling it very shortly. I think I'm going to call it Voxel Note, maybe. Um, but this is, oh, uh, that's a little, a little reminder to myself. Don't worry about it. Hold on. Perfect. So this is, this is my presentation software. <laughs> There's absolutely no ordering or sequence to these things. Um, in fact, you could consider them as unslides, because slide, I think, implies transition from one point to another. But um, I'm going to be uh, going through each and every one of these points um, at some point. Uh, also, everyone say hi to Andrew here. He's my timekeeper. Andrew, would you stand up? Um, I would like for everyone to tell Andrew that his job is irrelevant for this session because I am keeping my own time. And the way I'm doing that, you'll notice the sun. Take a look at that. It's moving slowly, slowly up. Once the sun sets and midnight is upon us, my talk will be over. And if I'm still talking, drag me off the stage because I could be doing this for a much longer amount of time. So. Um, where to start? I can choose any of my unslides, you know. So where where should I launch in? I think. How about this? A little uh, little primer on what Minecraft is, just for the um, unenlightened in the crowd. So Minecraft is an open source, or excuse me, uh, a game developed by this indie developer by the name of Notch. Um, I think he's Swedish, uh, but it has an element of creativity attached to it. In fact, I think I maybe I might even have a node here. Um, it's a little bit hard to read in the dark. Once noon hits, it should be a little bit easier. But uh, let's see. <laughs> Minecraft. Oh, Minecraft, yeah. So um, this, is, this is Minecraft. In fact, I, do, you guys, do you guys totally mind if I, if I don't show you the video? It's actually a little bit inspirational. It's really nice. Um, and it'll give you a brief primer on what Minecraft is. Let's watch. Oh, I don't actually have my volume on. What is the, uh, Yeah, hold on. Where's my mouse? Thank you. I don't, I don't hear anything either. It's not, it's not entirely important. Basically, what Minecraft is, is it's a. Uh, you That's, oh, it's fine. Yeah. Oh, not at all. I'm going to turn this down then. Turn it back up. There it is. You'll ever set foot in. Build a majestic. Yeah. I'm meeting up at my daytime here. Midnight is coming upon us. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Let's go to a place where everything is made of blocks. Yeah. Where the only limit is your imagination. Let go wherever you want to go. Climb the tallest mountains. Venture down to the darkest caves. Build anything you want. Day or night, rain or shine. Because this is the most significant sandbox you'll ever set foot in. Build a majestic castle. Invent a new machine. Or take a ride on a roller coaster. Play with friends. Build your own little community. 
protect yourself with the strongest armor that you can craft and fight off the dangers of the night. No one can tell you what you can or cannot do with no rules to follow. This adventure, it's up to you. Like I said, inspirational, yeah? That was really nice, huh? Um, so basically, at root, what Minecraft is, is it provides an environment for you to build things, right? From this basic unit of a block. And from this block, you can create more and more complex things, right? In fact, it has a lot in similar with um, OSM, uh, because you start with very simple things and eventually come up with a very complex data set, a very complex map. Um, same thing. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so that's what, that's what Minecraft is, is it allows you to build things, right? Similar to OSM. Um, but there are a few issues with it. First and foremost is it's written in a language called Java, um, I believe, or at least some compiled language. I think it's Java. And um, it's not easy to modify or edit, right? And second is that it's all closed source because it's a game and not just making millions off of this piece of software. Um, so a little while ago, a friend of mine, Max Ogden, created an open source port of Minecraft, and it's called VoxelJS. It's called VoxelJS because it's written in JavaScript, and it's run in browser. As you can see, um, this is Chrome. Make no mistake, this is, uh, this is an in-browser version of Minecraft, right? Um, and it was launched in January, and over the course of, in fact, I'll show you some of these modules. Over the course of just a few months, it has sort of exploded, right? It's become this huge community. That's Max right here, um, full of really interesting um, modules. I think it has over like 100 new modules um, over the course of like three months. But uh, at any rate, it's this really thriving open source community for uh, creating voxel worlds. Um, and uh, I started toying with this idea earlier in the year, um, the idea that there's a lot in common between Minecraft and, and OpenStreetMaps in the sense that Minecraft enables people to build worlds and OSM is a world waiting to be built in a sense. Um, and I was wondering what would happen if we could uh, somehow pair the two, like create a world in which, um, in which th that reflected sort of reality right, in this really simplified Minecraft aesthetic. And that's what I ended up doing. Um, I think it's somewhere up here in, my, in one of my unslides. Um, I wanted to actually, let me, let me jump back a minute. Like, part of the advantage of having unslides is that um, I don't have to go in any linear, you know, direction. So I'm going to jump back and just show you a few images of what can be built with Minecraft, right? Like, this is a really... You have a very simple um, interface for creating very complex objects. It's basically like a popular 3D editor, in, in a sense. Um, I'll show you a few more, just to check these off the box. Like that. You know? Or um, this. All these are made in Minecraft. Pretty impressive. Um, and... Uh, so the general thesis that it's, it's more of an experiment, really, um, that you can use a tool like Minecraft to add to the OSM archive, and um, that you could encourage development. Oh, it looks like we're, we're moving into after, afternoon here, evening. Um, so I should hurry along. Uh, but anyway, I'll, without further ado, I'll just show you some, something of what I've been building. Um, so basically, this is, this is a voxel world, right? And I have OSM roads here. Um, and you can see on the right, this is Washburn Street, so we're up somewhere in Soma at the moment. Um, this is entirely open source. By the way, if you want to follow along or uh, see how I built this um, presentation software, or uh, even this world, it's all on my GitHub repo, github.com slash Um But you can... Uh, you can walk through like actual actual data, like actual OSM data, things that users have contributed, right? Um, and it's kind of an interesting experiment. Like I, I faced a, a significant number of challenges actually implementing this in a 3D environment because OSM doesn't cater particularly well to um, to like a, a, a 3D world. Um, like it lacks elevation data and or like a significant amount of elevation data. And you have these weird um, idiosyncrasies with 
because OSM is primarily like a, a 2D map, right? Um, sorry, the render time is a little bit slow. But uh, my mom says good luck, by the way. <laughs> sorry, I'm trying to get to a specific point here. Um, actually, the, the Code for America office. Um, because I, I think it illustrates a really interesting variation. I, I, actually, I can't find it. But imagine, if you will, I assume that most of you guys have, uh, have worked with OSM data. And um, for instance, points of interest are, are, are um, nodes, right? And they're, they're not actually, it's really difficult to relate those to ways. So you'll find a building. Was, was there a building in this direction? I, I actually, huh, OK. Let's keep, keep going. I just like watching him run, mostly. Here's a building, right? So this is, a, this is a, a building here. And if, if there was like some point of interest attached to this building, like it's not within the way itself, right? It's some node within this way. And you'd have to find that block somewhere within this building, right? Which is almost impossible. Um, so actually creating some, some sort of association between nodes and ways was a little bit of a challenge. And actually, it's still something that I'm working on. Um, but regardless, this is a. This is, I just came up here to see you guys could watch me foot. Yeah. yeah. At any rate, um, so this is sort of an experiment I'm trying. I guess this is my thesis, is that um, Minecraft does a really good job at helping people create, especially 3D environments, right? And uh, actually, let's go back to uh, my world here and see how much longer I have. Andrew, how am I doing on time? Am I OK? Perfect. Um, Minecraft does a really good job at helping people create 3D environments. And OSM has a 3D environment that needs to be created. In fact, I mean, even just 2D would be really wonderful. Um, and if we could somehow converge those two worlds with uh, some variation of um, the atmosphere with which Minecraft allows people to create and sort of the purpose that OSM gives uh, individuals in creation process, then the two could actually be really powerful, right? And in a lot of ways, the, the two communities are doing a pretty similar thing. Um, I'm going to skip some of these. Like, this is actually irrelevant. Um, sorry, I just quit. Well, damn. This, this uh, sort of screws up my, um, my exit strategy, which was kind of cool. Hold on, I'll show you. I won't, I won't ruin it for you entirely, but. Um, oh, 996. I know, is there? Hold on. I was going to um, fly off into the stars, actually. Yeah, I know. I, I thought that was good. And maybe leave you guys with a closing line like, um, I don't know. Like, uh, you know, you can shoot for the moon, and even if you miss, you'll end in, in, in the stars. But I mean, we don't have to do that. So instead, I'll just fly off into the sunset and, uh, and maybe do something like the end. Sorry for the lousy exit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah, I see a significant amount of crossover. And I think, I think you draw out an int interesting point. Like, um, I don't know if the two would play nicely, and if like a Minecraft crowd could contribute to an OSM you know, crowd. Um, I think it'd be an interesting experiment, right? And I think that, that using an editor like Minecraft to add to the um, OSM archive, you can get at some really interesting, uh, y you can more easily, uh, how, how should I phrase, phrase this? Um, I think it enables you to add information, specific information sets more easily than a 2D map editor would. For instance, elevation, right? Or doorways, maybe. Um, I think those that, that a, a 3D editor like Minecraft could really be a boon to the OSM um, archive itself. Sorry, I'm rambling. Thank you for that. I, I appreciate that like, thought. That's, a, that, yeah, that's exactly where I'm headed with that. Yeah. yeah.
totally. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really fantastic point. It's an interesting um, pull between these two concerns almost. One is like this ethos that, uh, that Minecraft engenders, which is a really stripped down version of reality, right? And it's so tempting to like take something like Minecraft and think, oh, I could do so many things with it. And I could add um, like all the versions of every tree, or I could make you know, all the versions of every uh, type of material that you could build with, right? But on some level, it almost um, goes against the fundamental principles that with basic things, you can create more and more complex things, right? And eventually mirror reality in, in such a way that's recognizable, but not exact. You know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I meant to, I meant to add um, that what I just showed you is a, a prototype that I built in a day, but um, I'm working currently on an actual editing interface that allows you to view tags in a more intuitive manner. For instance, that building snafu is, is really weird, right, where it says, like, undefined up in the corner because there's no, it's, it's really difficult to represent the relation between a node and a way in Voxel. Um, but absolutely, yeah, working on that and, and would be excited to hear thoughts on, like, what makes most sense. Totally, yeah, that's a really great point. Like any piece of OSM data could be displayed in a way that's actually useful. Ex yeah, exactly, yeah. There, I think that this draws out a number of information sets within OSM that a 2D map doesn't really get at, or it does a little bit, but it's a little bit unintuitive, you know? Um, any other questions? Yeah. I do, yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Yeah. It's actually really hard to talk and play Minecraft at the same time, turns out. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Uh, there, there is a sheep module. I haven't implemented the sheep yet. But I was thinking, actually, this would be really fun. Um, not to throw like a thousand buzzwords at you, but if we, if we wanted to provide some incentive for adding OSM data, um, I think that a really interesting incentive would be um, uh, in, in Minecraft, wherever there's not light, zombies spawn. Right? And maybe it would be cool if, like, instead in this OSM voxel world, if there's no OSM data, you're going to have spiders, like, spawning the shit out of this place, right? Like, all over. Or zombies or whatever. Or sheep, I guess, you know. Yeah. I missed that, no. Absolutely, thanks. Yeah, that'd be perfect. What's that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. The enemy. Any others? Yeah. Ab yeah. Right, yeah. And I think to like um, add to that, if, uh, if there's any interest in programming, the, um, the Voxel.js framework has created this really extensible way for someone to make a world, right? And, and get a little bit of, it's, it's this really great um, small feedback loop almost, right? Where you make a change and you see it happen, you see a sheep appear where you said it was going to appear. Um, and it'd be a really fun way, I think, to get started in programming. Um, and I would encourage you guys to, to take a look at the API. As a matter of fact, there's a, there's a website I wanted to, it was actually one of my unslides. Um, I wish I could, here, wait, hold on. Let me stop flying. Uh, um, it was right, right here. I wanted to show you guys a little bit of, I think it's this. Yeah, um, Max has created this. This is basically how you generate a voxel world. And for my purposes, I also forgot to mention that a single voxel, the voxel is, the, is a cube, right? It is the, um, it's the basic unit of voxel.js. And for my purposes, a voxel is a meter by a meter by a meter. It's a cubic meter, right? Um, but it could be any size or any, any distance. And all of this, you actually, you actually don't need any of this, right? Um, you can generate 
again, I'll complete all this commentary with this few lines. Okay, even without that. Um, and you can specify a function. Sorry, live coding. This never works. But, uh, um, I'm going to create a flat world here. Oops. And I'm gonna, yeah, like I said, I think, do people call this cowboy coding? You know, like on the fly, maybe? Turn one. And um, x, y, z. And that's all you need to get started. Yeah, exactly. So this is going to return a flat world. The x plane is to the left, y plane is vertical, z plane is the the other third dimension, <laughs> you know. And um, actually, so if you go to this voxelcreator.jitsu, um, you can view your world, whatever you created. I'm sure mine's not going to work, but um, you know, for for people who are smarter than I am, you can go to voxelcreator.jitsu and uh, create a a voxel world to your specifications. Ah, uh, worked. What's up? <laughs> and uh, this is this is one of the other guys. His name is Substack. He's pretty big in the Node community. But um, yeah, everything is white. At any rate, yeah. So that was in response to. Oh yeah, uh, you know, learning programming, right? Sorry, tangent, guys. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. And then once they see the good path, then they can go back to the real world. Totally. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, that's a really fantastic point. In fact, Lou, could you speak to that? Uh, I think that Lou gave a talk. This is sort of how I got down this train of of thought like Minecraft could be used to actually not necessarily do something useful. I don't mean to say that my Minecraft isn't useful. Um, used for like civic planning and other things. So Lou, would you mind commenting on that? And there was a community somewhere that actually used it to like visualize neighborhood improvements. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There are a lot of really interesting applications for it, and I'd encourage you guys to think on that. I think, um, and, and I love talking about this, so if you have any ideas, it's just pull me off to the side afterwards. Are there any final questions? I think we're probably getting close to, hey, yeah. With what? I'm sorry. Um, I'm not, no, no. Anything else? Thanks, guys. I appreciate that.